In today's episode, I'm going to tell you all about tupping time, which is mating for sheep, when the boys go in with the girls or the rams go in with the ewes. And here they are, here are some of the rams. I'll just bring them forward into this little pen. Come on, boys. Go into that pen over there. There we are. So on the farm, we've got a collection of rare breeds, so lots of different old-fashioned sheep breeds, but then also a commercial flock producing wool and lamb for the table. And that's what these rams are. They're from the commercial flock. We've got a mixture of breeds in here. These ones with the big woolly heads are Dorsets, and then these other ones are clean Romney crosses, and that's our flock, that's the breed. And what we're doing now is putting the rams in with the ewes, they'll mate with them, and then the ewes will give birth five months later. So the gestation period from mating to birth is five months. And sheep are seasonal creatures, so they come into season, they start to ovulate, as the day length gets shorter and the nights start drawing in, in the autumn time. And then they give birth in the spring, five months later, when the grass starts to grow and the weather warms up. It's a natural cycle and very sensible for them to be pregnant during the winter and giving birth in the spring when the weather warms up. And so the rams, what you need to do is select the boys I want to take in with the ewes. And so the ones I'm choosing I've got blue dots on their backs, so it's this one. There we go. And who's next? This one. There you go. And that one. In you go. One, in you go. And one more. Out of the back. That's it. We'll just let these out here. Go on, boys. Your chance is on another day. So we've got about 350 commercial ewes, one ram will actually mate with around 80 ewes, so you don't need very many rams. But when they start working, when they go in with the ewes, they get exhausted, they lose a lot of weight, and so you need some backup. You need plenty of rams in case one gets ill or lame or just very tired. So what I need to do with these boys, we've selected them to go with the ewes for a specific reason. So these are homebred Romney clean rams. Each of our sheep has an ear tag and on the ear tag is an electronic chip. And what you do is you have a handheld scanner and you scan the ear tag, it beeps, up comes the number, and then everything you need to know about the sheep. So we know which ewes these rams are related to, and we know how quickly they've grown, how, whether they were born as twins or singles and, or triplets, and so we selectively breed the correct rams to put with the right bunch of ewes. And with these rams, what we will do is, once the ewes have given birth, we'll select some of the females that are born to replace the old ewes leaving the flock. So these rams will be breeding, breeding stock for the future, and also some of their lambs, or 75% of them, will go for the table, they'll go to the butcher. And so we're choosing sheep that have got good growth rates, so they grow quickly off grass, don't have to feed them lots of grain, they live off grass. The Romney and Clean is renowned for that as a breed. Um, they're also the right shape so that their ewes can give birth easily to their lambs. Some breeds of sheep have got great big thick heads or big wide shoulders and lots of muscle. The Clean Romney is more of a slight looking animal but grows very fast. So its front legs will be closer together, quite narrow in the shoulder, narrow in the head, so that the lambs can be born easily. They're also all born as twins. So prolificacy is a thing in sheep farming. What ideally you want, because each ewe has got two teats, is for her to give birth to twins. So we'll selectively breed from lambs that are born as twins, they'll go on to be the breeding ewes, so the mum is a twin, and the dad is a twin, and therefore she's more likely to give birth to twin lambs that they themselves will give birth to twins in the future. So that's the prolificacy of the flock. And that's measured in percentage. 
If all of the ewes give birth to one lamb, that's 100% lambing. If they give birth to two, that's 200%. So you're aiming for around 200% and our flock would be around 180, 190%. So some giving birth to singles, some to twins, and a few triplets in there as well. As well as growing animals to breed for the future with all the right attributes and for producing meat, we also selectively breed for wool. And the Romney is renowned for having a really lovely fleece. So here we go, if I show you the wool on this sheep, it's a beautiful wrinkle in there, a lovely luster, the fleece will grow a little bit longer than this during the winter months. And all of our wool off this farm, all our rare and traditional native wool, goes to Harrison Spinks in Yorkshire, a bed making company, where they use this beautiful, sustainable, natural product to be lined into their mattresses. Wonderful beds. Right now I've got the four rams I need, or tups as some people will call them. I just need to give them a health check. So the first thing I do is just check that they're in really good condition themselves. So they've got plenty of meat on them because they're going to be working hard. And you do that by putting your hand on their back and you can feel their ribs and their spine. And there should be a good covering of meat over that. So reasonably podgy. If they're too lean, then they won't work so well and it'll be putting them at risk that they're gonna to lose too much weight and become ill. And these are all in really good condition. If an animal's very fat, it's condition score five. If it's very skinny, it's one. And you want your rams to be three and a half, four. They need to be well fleshed, plenty of muscle, plenty of meat, and fit. You don't want them over fat because then they're lethargic and slow and can't get around. These need to be fit and active because they're gonna be mating with a lot of ewes. Okay, so they're physically in good order as far as their body condition goes. The next thing is to make sure that they're fully mobile and they can get around and they've got no problems with their feet. Uh, so I just walk them around a bit. I saw them run in from the field, so I know they're in pretty good order. And if I just uh, get a little bit of this spray, I'll just tip one up for you. So, yeah, let's get hold of this one. So when you tip a sheep up, they look a little bit mean, but what you do is push their head towards their bottom, push their hand down on their backside, and then just sit them up. And that doesn't hurt them at all. You sit them on one hip, on one buttock, not on, the, not on their spine, and then using your knees, you can just hold the sheep, and then it can't escape. And then you can use your hands um, to work and do whatever you need. So with the feet, the clean Romney has this lovely black hoof, which is very strong. And sheep have got two toes, they've got cleaves, they're called. And sometimes in between, it can get hot and sweaty and get a fungal infection, a bit like athlete's foot. But that's nice and clean. And that's good too. There we are. And again, with our breeding, we selectively breed for sheep with good feet. Nice straight legs. They don't want their toes twisting in or out. And if we have an animal that's constantly lame, we won't breed from it. So that's all good. I'm just gonna spray that a little bit, just in case there's a tiny bit of fungus going in there. This is a antiseptic, antibiotic spray. I think that's absolutely fine, but that's just precautionary, really. The other thing with breeding animals is, of course, they're a grazing animal, so they need very, very good teeth. And with a ram, of course, half of his genetics will be in every lamb. So you want very good rams and nice black nose. That's a good sign of good, strong skin on his face. And then the teeth they have on the bottom jaw, they need to meet the pad so they can graze well. Don't want them forward or back. You want them nicely meeting in the middle there, which is absolutely perfect. And this is only a young ram, so he's still got his baby teeth. And what they do is they put up two adult teeth, two, four, six, eight, and then they're full mouthed. And then they've got their molars, top and bottom, at the back to grind up all the food. So his teeth are spot on. And if his mouth was wrong, if it was not correct, we wouldn't be using him as a breeding ram. So my car livestock manager would have checked that from when he was younger and uh, Obviously, nothing has gone wrong there. So, teeth, toes, and then the other very important thing, of course, with a breeding ram, are testicles. And so they have two 
large testicles. They're going to be mating with around 80 ewes each. And so this is where the sperm is produced um, to get the ewes pregnant. Sheep have got two teats, so there's his nipples, and then two good testicles in there. And they need to be firm, not too squishy, and not too hard with no lumps and bumps. So good, healthy testicles. They seem a little bit weird, uh, checking a, a ram's testicles or balls as they might be called, but it is very, very important. And it's obviously just a natural part of his anatomy. And then of course his pizzle, which is there, and that making sure that's got no infection as well. So he's all good, ready to go. Come on boys. Go on then, go on then, go on then. There you go. Oh, made that look easy. Just put the tarpaulin over the top so they don't jump out. And we'll go and introduce them to the ewes.